I am Lamont at large and today I am at the Hazelwood Cemetery here in Springfield, Missouri. This here's the Masters grave. Uh, this is Helen and Herbert Masters. Uh, Herbert died December 22nd, 1974, about seven or eight months after his son here, Herbert Butch Masters, was murdered. He was murdered on April 24th, 1974. That's the pretty much exact date that the detectives know, and that's when he went up missing. His body was found about the second week of September of that year. He was found buried in a shallow grave in a landfill. And after a little bit of detective work, it was found that a man by the name of Daniel Lee Fott had committed the murder. Some good detective skills, to say the least. When they had talked to Daniel Lee Fott, they had a little bit of evidence against him. They had a a lot of hearsay from some people in the community, underworld figures. Uh, there was a guy running around town drunk claiming that uh, Daniel had involvement in the murder. And when the detectives were going through Herbert's uh, personal property, they found that he had an $80 check written out to Daniel Lee Fott. So you have a little bit of um, evidence in terms of that at least they knew each other. Now, uh, during the subsequent trial, uh, it seems that Daniel Lee Fott had hired two men to dispose of his body. Uh, last men with the last names of Coker and Ingram. They testified for the prosecution that uh, they were paid a sum of $300 by Mr. Fott to have Herbert's uh, body disposed of. And they were also promised an extra $150 to dispose of clothing that Herbert was wearing while he was murdered it was presumed that he was murdered at his residence he was shot once in the back of the head execution style and uh the men who were paid to dispose of his body had told the prosecutor that the reason why he was murdered was because uh daniel had thought that herbert had ripped him off in some kind of a drug deal uh not that he himself ripped him off but some associates of herbert had ripped off Daniel in a large sum of drugs. And so when he kidnapped him, uh, he had asked him where his money was and where the people were that he felt were, were responsible for him being ripped off. And uh, he claimed he didn't know anything about it. And that's where they took him uh, to the house and shot and killed him. Uh, the murderer was uh, tried and convicted of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. All these graves are Williams family, except uh, this one right here. She must have uh, been just like a part of the family, I would imagine. I don't know why, but I get this image of them having Thanksgiving dinner and she's at the table and they're just all talking and having a good time. Makes me wish that I was alive back then and 
I was just a uh, regular Joe, you know. Roy Wilhoit, December 2nd, 1878 to January 9th, 1960. He's buried in between both of his wives. Uh, this would be his first wife, Barbara. She looks like she died when she was 26 years of age. And uh, this is their son, Earl Roy Wilhoit. Looks like he died just a few months after he turned 18 years of age. And then his other wife. So he buried both his wives and his son. The picture on your screen is of John McNutt. Uh, he was a brakeman for the railroad. Uh, he's buried alongside his wife, Elizabeth, and his daughter, Inez. I'm not sure how his daughter died. She died at the age of 29. Uh, this here is a local legend to the Springfield, Missouri area. This is General Collie B. Holland. He was a general in the Missouri militia and they were brought together to fight off soldiers from the Confederate side. And he fought a very valiant and brave battle against the other side that was ran by a man by the name of John Marmaduke. Uh, a very ferocious battle, to say the least. And this is uh, General Holland's wife's grave right here. You can see that right there. And uh, he was a postmaster in Springfield for a while. He started a few banks. Pretty successful businessman, to say the least. Very revered in Missouri history. And you're probably wondering, what happened to John Marmaduke? Well, he lost a battle, and he said, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and become the governor of Missouri. And he became the 25th governor of Missouri. Not sure how that happened, but, um, you know, it's all part of history at the end of the day, right? Okay, another one in the books. Kind of got lost in thought walking around here, so I didn't do as much in this video that I wanted to. Anyways, the sun is slowly setting, and on to the gym I go. Live but not live, but still alive by the grace of God. I am Lamont at Large. Thank you for watching my video. I will catch up with you on the next one. Peace out.